Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, and Ginny Sims in The Road to Morocco. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. All a producer needs to guarantee a smashing success at the box office these days is faith, hope, and Crosby. And our faith is considerably strengthened tonight by the addition of Ginny Sims. Bing and Bob hit the jackpot for Paramount with that epic drama of music and mirth called The Road to Morocco. And believe me, there's nothing wrong with your morale that The Road to Morocco won't cure. If you've seen the picture three or four times, like most people, you know that any resemblance of two characters in this play to a couple of living persons is no coincidence. They are really Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. The Road to Morocco comes pretty close to setting a record for the number of people who've asked us to present it. Since the Paramount picture came out, I've lost count of all the letters you've sent enclosing Lux Toilet Soap wrappers as your tickets to this play, if we could get it. Along with his soap wrappers, one man offered me a personal bribe of a porterhouse steak. Well, <laughs> this is one theater where you don't have to pay to get in. It's our way of showing you that we appreciate the support you've given our product. The result is that you win two ways. You get a hit play like The Road to Morocco and a hit product like Lux Toilet Soap. You can't beat that for a double bill. Now we're off on The Road to Morocco, starring Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, and Ginny Sims. The freighter star of Cape Town was sunk today off the coast of Africa by a series of mysterious explosions. All hands are safe and accounted for, with the exception of two unidentified stowaways. Just a minute, Lou. All right, that's enough music. Hold it. Hold the music. Ladies and gentlemen, we aren't going to set a scene for tonight's play, for those two unidentified stowaways have been found. They're right here in the theater with us. These two boys are cousins, Jeff and Orville Peters. They went through this experience together, and we're going to hear about it in their own words. Orville Peters, will you tell us, please, about the time you spent on that raft after the shipwreck? 48 days in a raft. 48 days under the broiling sun without food and water. 48 days. What do you mean, 48 days? It was 48 hours. We had plenty of water. Now, just a minute, Jeff. What are you trying to do, get a four-page spread in life or something? 48 days. Listen, who's telling this story? We're both telling it. You heard what the man said. The man said we're both supposed to tell it. Well, the man asked me to start, didn't he? All right. We'll get it straight. All right. 48 hours in a raft. That's better. 48 hours drifting helplessly on the sea. Oh, I didn't care about myself. It was... Well, it was my cousin Jeff I was worried about. Oh, isn't this awful? Listen to him. Jeff was... Well, Jeff was all on edge. It got to the point where he was biting my fingernails. <laughs> Cut it out, will you, Jeff? Cut it out. Cut out that whistling. I can't stand it anymore. Yeah, here now. Yeah, what's the matter, son? Whistling, whistling, all the time whistling. Your mother must have been frightened by a tea kettle. <laughs> now, Orville, take it easy. Take it easy, he says. Look at us, two on a raft, sunny side up. I'll tell you how to get home, you said. We'll stow away, you said. No, sir, I said. Don't be a sap, you said. No, sir, I said. We're stowing away, and that's that, you said. No, sir, I said. Yeah, ta ta yeah, ta ta yeah, ta ta yeah. What a brilliant <laughs> conversationalist you are. Yeah, I took one look at that seagoing crate, and I knew it would blow up in our faces. Mm, wait till they find out who was smoking in the powder room. <laughs> Never mind that. Now look at us. Food gone. Nothing to eat. Um, say, hey, what's that, that bulge in your pocket there? Huh? Yeah, the oh, bulge. that bulge? Oh, that's just a little... Yeah, what is it? Come I... on, let's see. Come on, reach. Well, I tell you, it's only... <laughs> Well, what do you know? Look. Yeah, well, what do you know? Two biscuits. Holding out on me, huh? Well, I was going to wait for your birthday and put a candle on yours. <laughs> sweet, sweet. You don't mind if I bite into my portion, do you? No, go on, bite. What do I care? Thank you, Turkey. You can spit your teeth right over here next to mine. <laughs> like biting into a blockbuster. Well, Turkey, we got to face it. We may be days and days and days without seeing ship or land. We're going to get hungry. 
Mighty hungry. What do you mean, get hungry? When we started, this raft was nine feet long. <laughs> Tell you what we'll do. We'll toss a coin. You ready? Go ahead, toss. Here we go. Now, Turkey, you call it. What's the date on the nickel? Uh, 1910. You're right, 1910. But what month? <laughs> June. That's pretty close. It's July. Well, that's the way it goes. Somebody loses, somebody wins. <laughs> okay, so you win the nickel. See if you can find any white meat on that buffalo. <laughs> Turkey, old man, I have a TL for you. We tossed for something much deeper than that. Yeah? I remember a story once about two fellas like us, castaways and hungry. They tossed a coin, too. Uh-huh. The fellow who survived used to tell his grandchildren about his pal's sacrifice. Hey, that's for... Hey, wait a minute. What pal's sacrifice? I don't know, though. You're all blubber. Not much meat. You wouldn't make a good-sized patty, fatty. <laughs> you mean you... Jeff, you're losing your buttons. You mean you'd eat me without ketchup? <laughs> don't do it, Jeff. There must be an easier way to get on We the People. <laughs> calm down. Now, calm down, Junior. I'm not going to do anything right away. I might not do anything for a week or so. Not until I get desperate. <laughs> oh, Jeff, listen, you wouldn't like me once I bit my tongue and I taste it awful. Help, Jeff, don't help. Turkey, Jeff. look. Huh? Look over there. Am I seeing things? What's the matter? Look. It's land. Land? Land! Yoo-hoo! We're saved! We're saved! Yeah, there it was. Land! We jumped off the raft and started to swim to shore. But Jeff was weak and he couldn't make it. Who was weak? Who was that? So I put my arm around his waist. I just made it. And started to swim with one hand. <laughs> Boy, I saved his life that day. Oh, brother, get I this. I pulled him up on the beach. He was all in, unconscious. I started to work over him. I worked for hours. Come on, Turkey. Turkey, come on, open your eyes. Open up, Junior. You'll be all right. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Oh. Come on, now. Oh. Come on. Gee, this is a switch, me getting slapped by a man. <laughs> Say, what happened? Well, you tried to save me, Junior. Come on, now. That's a big boy. That's oh, stop a... slapping me. I'm conscious now, ain't I? Well, it's hard to tell with you. <laughs> Yeah, fine pal you are. All, all I hope is that Aunt Lucy's looking down from above and seeing the way you're treating me lately. Oh, you're going to start stuffing Aunt Lucy down my throat again? Yeah, well, never mind. She toss, saw you tossing that coin and licking your chops. You're certainly sloughing off your promise to her, Aunt Lucy. Boy, I can see her now lying there in her dying bed, looking at you with those big, trusting eyes. Before I go, Jeff, promise me you'll always be a friend of little Orville, she said. No matter what happens, you'll never leave the little jerk, she said. Promise me. Yeah, and then she up and died before I had a chance to say no. <laughs> Jeff, don't. What's the matter with you? Boy, I only hope she didn't hear that. You know, the dead have a way of coming back. Oh, get out. When they're dead, they're dead. Not Aunt Lucy. She was a Republican. <laughs> she was such a good Republican, she had her will chiseled on a Wilkie button. <laughs> okay, Junior, okay. What we got to do now is find out where we are. Hmm? Is that right? Right. Let's see. Oh, look. There's a signpost. Hey, see what it says. The road to Morocco. Morocco, 74 miles. Last chance for gas and oil. Fill up at Flanagan's. <laughs> and keep to the right to let Ramo buy. <laughs> Say, what do you know? <laughs> Listen, do you hear something? I didn't hear nothing. Listen. <laughs> there. You catching up a cold, Junior? <laughs> I didn't do that. It came from way over there, behind that sand dune. Well, jumped up Jehoshaphat. Look at that. It's a horse. A horse? Oh, did you ever hear of a horse with, with a long neck and two great big bumps on his back? Leaving yourself open, aren't you, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be silly. That's a camel. That's a ship of the desert. And right now we're going sailing. Come on, get up on that camel, Junior. Okay, where do I sit? Get in that rumble seat. I'm going to steer. <laughs> Boy, what a ride. This is the first time I ever did the rubber Sit up, down. girl. Come on, girl. Hang on, Junior. We're off on the road to Morocco. This taxi is tough on the spine. Where we're going, why we're going, we'll know by and by. But we'll meet Jenny Sims 
Or we'll know the reason why <laughs> We're off, off on the road, road to Morocco Watch your tempo Hang on till the end of the line I hear this country's where they do The dance of the seven veils we tell you more, but we would have the censor on our tails. We certainly do get around. Like Webster's Dictionary, we're Morocco bound. We're off on the road to Morocco. Look out! Well, clear the way, cause here we come. The men eat fire, sleep on nails, and saw their wives in half. Seems to me there should be easier ways to get a laugh. We're off on the road to Morocco. And somewhere I feel kind of numb. For any villains we might meet, we haven't any fears. Paramount will protect us cause we're signed for five more years. We certainly do get around. Like a complete set of Shakespeare that you buy in the corner drugstore for $1.98. We're Morocco bound. Or like a volume of Mordecai that you buy in the department store at Christmas time for your cousin Julia. We're Morocco bound. We arrived just at sundown at the quaint little Moroccan city of... Here, here, what are you trying to do? <laughs> what are you trying to do? Well, it's my turn to tell the story now. Well, where? I'll be good, too. All right, you won't be good. Well, we arrived just at sundown. You can read all the lines. You just let you me just start, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Standing there looking out the window. The quaint little Moroccan city of Kadamish. We stood in the crowded marketplace watching the hawkers vending their wares... The native rug peddlers ruddling their pegs. See what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Everything was serene, and then the gates of the town were flung open, and 20 horsemen came riding into town. This occasioned a slight flurry of excitement. Orville! Orville, where are you? Right over here behind these goose pimples. Well, I reckon there's been some sort of a shooting ruckus down at the Buckeye Saloon, huh? Yeah, I ain't looking for trouble, partner, but if trouble comes to looking for me, I'm going to be mighty hard to find. Uh, I <laughs> wonder what it was all about. Let's ask somebody. Let's ask that fellow there. Yeah, why don't we? Hey, uh, hey, you there. What's the excitement, Grandpa? Who are those fellows? He is Moulay Kassim, the desert sheik. Well, what's he so excited about? Did he hear from his draft board? <laughs> he loves the Princess Shalmar of Karamish. He has come here to ask her to marry him. Must be a Donnybrook when he comes for a divorce, huh? So long, Grandpa. Say, Jeff, I'm hungry. I wonder if you can get a hand out in this burg. Place looks like it's loaded with food. Look at that. Something to eat, please? Nice cutlets, figs and dates, meat pies? Oh, no, thanks. We ate only four days ago. <laughs> but could we just hang around and reminisce? Boy, look at that food. I wish I had my drool cup with me. <laughs> my agent. <laughs> Ah, good evening, brother. I'll have some of those. <laughs> a little of that and some of those. <laughs> take, take all you want, my friend, all you want. Money? <laughs> money? No, no, no money. Take all you need, my friend. <laughs> you got too much of that cheese, I know. <laughs> what is this? Free cold cuts around here, everything on the house? Boy, that USO really gets around, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, what are we waiting for? I'll take a meat pie. Have one on me, Jeff. Sure, everybody grab. Take the hands off the food. Ow! See, I did. The other fellow did it. Why can't we? He is not sane. To us, such unfortunate ones are sacred. Everything is free to the dim-witted. Well, my friend here isn't exactly John Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I don't think that's fair. Hey, wait. Come over here, Turkey. Come here. Hey, can you imagine that? Just because a guy's got a loose boat, he don't need a ration stamp. <laughs> Come on, now stop wrapping your rack and come over here. Look at me. Let me see. Look at me. Here. What's that? Yeah, you'll do fine. You're all right. Hey, what's the idea of casing me like that, huh? Turkey, from now on, you're sacred. What do you mean, sacred? You just became a full-blooded American idiot. Oh, no, no, no. You do it. Who's going to believe I'm an idiot? With the head start you got? Now, all you got to do is go into a shop, you put on that silly look, and you talk like this. Now, watch. You do like this. Hmm? 
I'll take some of those and I want some of those and I'll take some of those and I want some of those. Let me have that slow. You like this. <laughs> I'll take some of those and I want some of those and some of those and some of those and I want some of those. <laughs> you feel all right, Daddy? <laughs> let me hear you do it. Come on, let me hear you. I'll take some of those and some of those. And give me some of those and some of those. Oh, you're a pro. First shop we went to, the guy will probably load us. He'll throw in his daughter and everything. Come on. His daughter? Sure. I'll take some of those, some of those. <laughs> wait a minute now, wait. Don't overstrain here. Here's a likely looking dive. Come on in, come on. Don't forget. Lay it on good and thick. Sigga, she comes in on here. Well, gentlemen, what and I don't mean you, huh? <laughs> Huh? Uh, what? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Tell him. Tell him. Tell oh, him. Oh. Well, I want number no and number no and number no. Hey, why do you know I'm making fun of me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I always talk like that. Oh, you do, eh? Well, why don't you? Because I can't help it. I'm an idiot. I'm taken. <laughs> So you're saying I'm an idiot too, eh? Well, if you think you're an idiot, I'm not going to argue with you because I... What's that? Not just, just a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't get him. Wait. Don't hit him with that pot. Wait, 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 wait. Put wait, wait. down that pot. He put it down. Now pull it off my head. Oh. Oh. Now get out. Come on. Oh. Get off in that premise. All right. All right. We were just leaving. Woo. Come on, Turkey. Come on, boy. There you are. Look at, look at me. Look at me, son. You all right? Turkey, speak. Speak to me. I'll take some of those. Some of those. Perfectly normal. He's yeah. all right. Something had happened to my cousin Orville. I could see that. Probably a touch of fever. We went into a cafe nearby and we ordered up a feast. Didn't have any money, but... This was no time to quibble. As we sat there eating, we noticed the manager showing a customer the door. Get out! Get out, you swine! Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> hey, Commando. What was, what was the trouble there? What? The trouble? Yeah. He was one Kolak short in his bill. I'll kill him! He's dainty, isn't he? <laughs> One Kolak short. Jeff, how much is a Kolak? Well, it's, it's less than a cent and a half. You mean they'd murder a guy for a cent and a half? Listen, how do you figure on paying for all this stuff? What's the matter? You scared? You got red blood, ain't you? Yeah, but I don't want to get it all over strangers. <laughs> Go ahead. Eat up. Have a good time. Fling me one of those fillets over there, will you? Forget about it. Hey. Hmm? If you look over there, those two guys making with gestures. I think they're looking at us. Maybe they want to speak to us, huh? To one of us. Go ahead, Junior. You ask them what they want, hmm? Listen, I'm not curious. Anyway, it's you they want, see? Hmm. Well, I guess I better go, huh? Yeah, if they get tough, don't worry about a thing. I'll be right here under the table. <laughs> Buy a rug for me, Jeff. Well, Jeff went over to talk to the two guys. I couldn't hear what they said, but they all kept looking back at me and counting up on their fingers. First it was five fingers, then it was ten. Then they shook hands all around, and Jeff came back to the table. Hi, Turkey. Hey, what are you so happy about? Who are those guys, the local bookmakers? Oh, guys, um, I'll check, please. The check? You got money? 230 kolaks, please. Here's 230 kolaks for the little snack and five for you. Oh, come, come. Let little Orville in on this deal. How'd you get the spinach, old boy? It's a funny thing, funny thing. A guy I never seen before in my life gives me 2,500 kolaks. That's 200 federal diplomas. Are you listening? 200 skins? Mm hmm Why, what for? Oh, I stole him something. Well, you got nothing to sell. We already hocked your pivot tooth, and the Mayo Clinic refused my brain. <laughs> it wasn't much, but it was all I had, and was he anxious to get it? What'd you sell him? Uh, Orville, uh, I want you to keep very calm now. What did you sell him? You. Oh, well, for a minute. Huh? Look out now. Look me? Down. Me? Look Wait a minute. Get that guy and give him those fish back. What's the matter with you? You can't sell me. I'm not a horse. It's just the way I comb my hair. <laughs> I know, Orville. You and I know you're not a horse, but these people are peculiar. What are you talking about? You going nuts? Why would a guy buy a guy? I don't know. I don't know. They buy anything. Any old junk. 
Well, why would he buy me? What does he want me for? I didn't ask him. Listen, do you know why they buy guys in a country like this for slaves? They pick you, they, they hit you with whips. They put you to pick in Guayuli. They beat you and they beat you. Oh, they don't pick Guayuli here. Well, they beat you for whatever they're picking. <laughs> why don't you Guayuli. relax? Why don't you relax? Take it easy. I got this thing all figured out, see? Yeah? I got plans. Don't tell me about plans. All I know is I'm being caught with mine down. <laughs> Look, I got the guy's address. I'm going to get you back, and when I do, we'll be 200 bucks ahead. What's that? Ten? Well, that's something. Certainly. Then a hundred of that's mine. That's what I'm telling you. Well, come on. Slip it to me. Put me in the higher brackets. No use giving it to you now. If anything goes wrong with my plans, why, the, the money'd be wasted. If anything goes wrong? Yes. Well, I'm getting out of here, see? You might have sold me, see? But you're not going to deliver me, see? Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, sir, see? I don't have to deliver you. They're coming to pick you up. Coming to... What? Yes. Who do you think you're playing with, children? You're talking to Turkey, the man with the muscles. We are ready, gentlemen. No, wait. Take his feet, Abdul. I do. No, listen. So long, Marvel. Now pick him up. Stop, wait. Let go of me. Let go. Let... Well, the least you could do is wrap me as a gift. <laughs> Too bad. You know, if he'd been a foot taller, I could have got another hundred. <laughs> In just a few seconds, Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, and Ginny Sims will return in Act Two of The Road to Morocco. Now, here's a conversation overheard at a department store blouse counter. What do you think, Mary? I love that yellow. It reminds me of daffodils. Oh, what about this shocking pink? I'll just hold it up to my face before the mirror. <sighs> no use. These high colors are no good with my skin. Oh, Janet Scott, will you stop talking like that? You make me so mad. Well, Mary B. Frank, doesn't my skin look dull as a dish rag? Well, let me ask you something. Do you ever take any real care of it? Well, I have so little time. Oh, Janet, nobody has any time nowadays. But you could have a nice complexion if you really wanted to. Beauty course, I suppose. A beauty course right at home, dear, and costing next to nothing. Now, will you promise me to do what I tell you for a month if I promise you that your skin's going to look prettier? <laughs> All right, it's a bargain. Let's make for the toilet goods counter and get some Lux soap. And here's what Mary told her friend to do. Use lots of the lather and smooth it well into your skin so as to get the full benefit out of it. Lux soap's lather is very creamy, cleanses like a charm. Now, rinse off, splash on plenty of warm water. Now, finish with cold. Now, here's a really soft towel. Pat your face dry. Don't rub. Simple, isn't it? Just do that two or three times a day to give your skin a quick beauty pickup. And above everything else, don't neglect it at bedtime. Be faithful about it. Do it for 30 days. Then, dear, you can give me your next coffee ration as a thank offering. Yes, 30 days of regular Hollywood care works wonders. There's a reason why nine out of ten lovely screen stars have used gentle white Lux toilet soap for years. It's a real beauty soap. You'll like the satiny feeling active lather gives your skin, the new freshness and loveliness it brings. Begin your Lux soap beauty facials tomorrow. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of The Road to Morocco, starring Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, and Ginny Sims. <laughs> Our story continues. The boys had just reached the point where Jeff Peters sold his cousin Orville for 2,500 Colex. Oh, what a heel I am. You ain't kidding, cousin. You're just a gremlin with ears. Jeff, tell us, how did you feel after they took Orville away? Did you have a twinge of conscience? Mm, yes. Yes, I did. I, I couldn't get to sleep that night for almost 20 minutes. And then, like, like in a dream, I seemed to feel the presence of another party. It was Aunt Lucy. She spoke to me. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, you must find Orville, Jeffrey. Aunt Lucy. You must find him at once. Bring him back. Well, gee, Aunt Lucy, I, I, I don't even know where to look. The fellow I sold him to was only a jobber. He, he, uh, he resold him later and wrote off his loss. Jeffrey. <laughs> Do you know you've turned out to be a regular stinker? <laughs> I guess you're right, Aunt Lucy. Can't you tell me where he is, hmm? Oh, I I'm not supposed to, Jeffrey. I it's against the rules. Oh, gee, come on, Aunt Lucy, gee, come on, well, tell well, me. Well, if you go to the marketplace, 
then head east about 200 paces, you'll come to... Oh, oh I, I can't talk to you anymore now, Jeffrey. Here comes Mr. Jordan. <laughs> Well, I, I went out to look for my cousin that night. There I was, walking through the streets of Karamish. All around me, strange sights and strange smells. But none of them was oil. <laughs> Suddenly, a note fell at my feet. A note wrapped in a stone. A stone wrapped in a note, and it wasn't meant to fall at your feet, either. I picked it up, and I read, Dear Jeff, flee for your life before it's too late. You can't do anything for me now. If you stick around, you'll only get us both into trouble, maybe killed. Say nothing to nobody about this. Flee, flee. Respectively yours, Turkey Peters. P.S. I am being tortured day and night. Flee, flee. F-L-E-A. Hmm? <laughs> that's Turkey. That's him, all right. Don't worry, old boy. I won't let you down. I'll get you out, all right. There before me stood a palace gleaming like ivory in the moonlight. And as I approached, I heard music and a woman's voice singing. Constantly. But constantly Constantly I wish you near And now you're here So close to me And it isn't magic and you do exist For after all I know when I feel And you were meant to be My heart's delight my way through the palace and at last found myself in a long tiled room. At all sides were Nubian slaves and dancing girls in dancing costumes, dancing. And on a mountain of pillows, a man in native costume lay reclining. I couldn't see his face for a lovely girl was smothering same in kisses. At last she stopped, the man sat up and said, Hey, somebody unbraid my toes, will you? <laughs> uh-huh, so this is where you are. Well, ain't this a pip? <laughs> Take it on the lamb, brother. We don't want any cheese today. Beat it. Who is this stranger? Leave the country and forget you even knew me, he says. Flee, he says. Flee. Why, you dirty double-crossing hoarder, you? Take that man away. Remove him from my sight. Yes, princess, come. Let go, let go. Come. Turkey, come on, tell him to lay off. This is me, your friend. This is old Jeff, Turkey, old buddy. Turkey? Why does he call you Turkey? Oh, the fellow is mad. Take him away. Toss him to the crocodiles. The ones that still have their teeth. That Pepsodent is wonderful. <laughs> um, well, he's, he's my friend, I tell you. Let me go. Wait. Orville, do you know this man? Well, I never saw him before in all oh, my life. Oh, you dirty, underhanded, sickle snoot. We were kids together. We were in the same class for years. Till I got promoted. Let him go. The stranger will stay. Oh, but hon. Come, stranger. Sit here beside me. Well. <laughs> Yes. Now, Orville, I want you to tell me the truth. Do you know him? Well, I used to, but I kind of outgrew him. I don't dally much with riffraff these days, and he's a pretty raffy kind of a riff. <laughs> oh, yeah? What are you made up for, anyhow? What is this? Ladies' night in the Turkish bath or something? What time do you clean the pool? <laughs> Might interest you to know, Buster, that you're now looking at the future prince of Karamish. Who? 
I'm going to be a pasher with the accent on the pash. Yeah. <laughs> Trouble is, you passed out about 10 years ago. Yeah, well, the Princess Shalmar and me are going to be married on, uh, when is the big day, dream thing? When the moon in its last quarter silvers the blossoms of the almond tree. That's Tuesday night about nine. Oh. <laughs> what a pity I should be listening to Hobby Lobby, I think. <laughs> See, how can a dream like you really go for a drip like this, anyhow? Well, it's written in the stars. I have been counseled by Hyder Khan, the wise one, to take this man for my husband, and I must obey. Well, old Hyder Khan must have been reading last year's racing form or something. Oh, is that so? Well, there's nothing you can do about it. See, I'm her Heathcliff, and believe me, I'm going to turn on the Heath. <laughs> <laughs> she bought me, see? She bought you? Certainly. You sold me to her for 200 bucks. Yeah, no mistakes rectified after leaving the window. I feel like a black market, but just to show you there's no hard feelings, I'm going to stick around for the wedding. I'll even give you away, pal. Oh, now, just a second. You've already given me away. Come on, blow before I press a button and have your head served up in a cup and a saucer. Now, wait. Look, uh, look, come on. Now, wait. Cut out this shoving. Cut it out. See, there'll be a room full of teeth around here. Yeah, and you're going to look awfully funny with your gums showing. <laughs> you better get out of here. I might forget that I'm the prince. Not with that Arabian antimacassar you got on there. Get the sleeves on this Let go. <laughs> Why, you, you ripped my sleeve. Do that again. He did it. Why, you do that again. Gentlemen, please. Oh, what is your name? Jeffrey. Jeffrey? Mm-hmm. Jeffrey, I want you to stay here with me. I, uh... <laughs> well, I, I could be very happy here. Oh. Um... Could you, Jeffrey? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> um, if he stays, I'm leaving. Do you hear it? I'm leaving. Now, you can stay as long as you want to, Jeffrey. Sure, stick around. Nice to have you. <laughs> I knew why Jeff wanted to stay. He was trying to move in on me. He wanted to be the prince. That evening, just before dinner, my ladies-in-waiting came in to comb my hair and arrange my turban. A turban that's a stuffed fascinator with feathers. <laughs> I will never forget Miramar, my head lady-in-waiting, and I knew what she was waiting for. <laughs> me. Orville, oh, prince. Yes, Miramar? Why is the princess going to marry you, Orville? She was to have married Moulay Kassim, the desert sheik. Why has she changed her mind? Oh, I guess sheiks have gone out of style. What the modern girl wants is a nice, reliable wolf. <laughs> There's something very strange about it all. Something very, very strange. Well, it's a strange country, baby. They got butter here. <laughs> Orville, listen. If this were known, it would mean my death, but in my heart, there is a great love for you. You too? Say, does everybody get this kind of treatment in Karamish, or have I got a C card? <laughs> I love hopeless, or do you perhaps have some crumbs of affection for me? Oh, you know how a prince is. A prince is. <laughs> Later on, I may set you up in a little hat shop or teach you how to siphon gas or something. <laughs> and because I love you, there is something I must tell you. I'm all ears, or haven't you noticed? Oh, listen. <laughs> The princess is unfaithful. She cares nothing for you. Don't be silly. Nobody throws away 200 bucks. Look, at this very moment, she and your best friend are in each other's arms in the gardens below. Well, I... Uh, what? Look, see them? Why, the low-down, filthy, double-crossing centipede. Why, the crawling lizard. I'll show them what a salami has got to go through. No, 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 no. Don't waste your anger upon them. Orville, I love you. Hey, let go. You and I thus, and thus, and thus, will my love consume you. The manufacturer, direct to consumer, I go. Oh, <laughs> beloved, kiss me. Thus, and thus, and... Comes you, it goes with your hand. You certainly know the right thing to wear. Moonlight becomes you. I'm thrilled at the sight, and I could get so romantic. You're all dressed up to go dreaming 
Now don't tell me I'm wrong And what a night to go dreaming Mind if I tag along If I say I love you I want you to know It's not just because there's moonlight Although moonlight becomes you so Say, Princess, uh, I want to ask you something. Supposing you sort of put off this wedding for a little bit, and I sort of hung around a little bit, and maybe learned a couple of choruses of black magic or something, and you got to <laughs> grew to like me a little bit. And wouldn't that change things a little bit, hmm? No, Jeffrey, it would not. I like you now. The more I get to like you, the more reason I'll have to marry Orville. You like me, so you're going to marry Orville. Boy, that's a new kind of brush. That is the way it must be. But look, 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 look at here now. Listen, listen, it's Moulet Kasim. I must leave you. But good princess, night. princess. Well, good night. Where is he, this, this dog? Hold your anger, Kasim. Wait until you've heard. I have already heard. You are planning to marry this, this American. Yes, Kasim, but it's only because... Enough. Come, Ahmed. Let us find this jackal. No, no, Wait. First, you must hear the words of Hyder Khan, the wise one. Hyder Khan, tell him what the stars have said. Oh, lion of the desert, it is here written that the first husband of the Princess Shalma will die a violent death within a week of the marriage. What is that you say? It is also written that her second husband will be blessed with long life and happiness. Now do you understand, Kasim? The American as my first husband will die within the week. And then I will be free to marry the man I love. <laughs> this is a great joke. Kiss me, Shalma. Kasim. I heard them say it, Orville. The prince's first husband will die within a week. Miramar, that's ridiculous. I tell you because I love you. Listen, the wedding is all planned. I just spent my last three ration points for rice. <laughs> well, there were two fellows here just now measuring me for some sort of an outfit. Measuring you? Yeah, I guess they're the royal dressmakers. No, my beloved, no. They are royal undertakers. They were measuring you for a coffin. You mean a zoot suit with a wood hood? <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you marry her, you die. Hiya, Turkey. What's new in the pasha racket? Jeff, I'm hmm? glad you came in. <laughs> look, sit down. I gotta have a talk with you. Now look, Orby, I've been doing a lot of thinking. There's no use of you and I talking or arguing anymore. I'm going to beat it on out of here. No, 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 that's it. You're not. You don't have to. Look, I'm the guy that's shoving off, and you're taking Shalmar. See, I'm giving her to you. Well, well, wait a minute. Wait, what, what are you, uh, what are you cooking up here? The last gal you gave me was that lady wrestler up at the St. Nicholas rink. What's behind all this? Well, I got to thinking about the burying. I mean, the marrying. Mm -hmm. And I got a hunch it wouldn't last. I got a feeling in a week I'd be cold. I mean, uh, and besides, I got a girl, see? Hello, Miramar. My sweet. Uh, right. <laughs> I met her at the harem right off the assembly line. <laughs> nice model. Yeah, and this is one I know won't be frozen for the duration. He's going to fly with me. My love will consume him thus, and thus, and thus. <laughs> you know, a girl can eat too much yeast, you know. <laughs> Go away for a second, honey, will you? Oh, this is a whole new shuffle, huh? You two. Well, wait till Shalmar hears about this. Yeah, but it's not going to be easy to get Shalmar to give me up, you know. Oh, naturally, it's just going to tear the heart out of her. But she might settle. She might settle for me. Yeah, well, that's the spirit, and I'll be right behind you. Sure. Sure, sure. Well, so long. My beloved, why don't we fly right away? Look, high octane. <laughs> Why don't you just fly around and warm your motor up? I'll join you later, huh? <laughs> Orville. Orville. Wake up. Wake up, Orville. Okay, okay. I'll get a job tomorrow. <laughs> Orville. It's Aunt Lucy. Wake up. <gasps> oh, Aunt Lucy? Orville. How can you sleep after what you've done to Jeffrey? You've got to tell him the truth. Oh, but I ain't doing nothing. Look what he did to me. I insist that you tell him. No. You must. I won't. Orville, 
when you were a little boy and you said won't, do you remember what I did to you? Well? Well, there's still a little steam in the old wing. Ow! And the next time, I'll slap you in the face. I don't know, Princess. This this just doesn't add up. I, I want you, and you say you want me, and Orville says it's okay, and still you're going to marry him. I told you, Jeffrey. It's something I can't explain. Orville and I are going to be married, and that's all I have to say. Oh, Princess, all right of Karamish. Well, Hyder Khan. Princess, listen and be merciful. I have made a calamitous error. You must not marry that American. You must marry Moulay Kasim. Moulay Kasim? Speak. I must hear everything. Oh, Princess, when I read the stars in the heavens that night, I read them wrong. How could you? Princess, forgive me. A fly got in the telescope. Then then my husband will not die? No. Jeffrey, isn't it wonderful? Well, what's wonderful about it? It just means turkey's back in circulation and you get tied up to Mully Kasim. Mully Kasim? Yeah. Oh, Jeffrey, you may feel strange about marrying a princess, but I'll spend the rest of my life trying to live it down. You mean me? Yes. Oh, how about this? Wait till I break the news to Fatter than me. So that's why little Orville was so anxious to hand you over to me, huh? <laughs> Wait till I tell that boy. Well, well, don't say anything to him right now, Jeffrey. Not just yet. We must make plans for departure before Moulay Kasim hears. Cosma, prepare a, a caravan. We will leave at once. <laughs> Now, listen, Jeff. What's the matter? Why don't you get some sense into that shell and just you and me blow, huh? Well, we're going to the United States to get hooked up, I tell you. This character, Kasim, is trying to kidnap her. Boy, what a sneaky way for Lockheed to get welders. Listen, Jeff. <laughs> you're in a bad spot. That guy, Hyder Khan's got that jinx of his spread all over the world. Oh, yeah? Let's see him mess around in Brooklyn. Princess! Princess Moulay Kasim! Uh-oh, here comes Murdoch Incorporated. Princess, he knows all! Jeffrey, Jeffrey hide! Too late! So, that is your plan, running away with this, this dog. Don't call me a dog. Why not? The Cocker Spaniels resent it. <laughs> Look, I'm not mixed up in this at all, Moulay. I just work here. Do you lie to Kasim? No, Moulay, settle down. It's a big switch now. I gave her up. I'm on your side. I'm your friend. They're ducking out on you, the dirty double-crossers. What do you think we ought to do with them? What is this? Nice going, Junior. Silence! Who is this goat? This moon-faced son of a one-eyed donkey? I wouldn't let him call me that, Jeff, even if there is a resemblance. <laughs> Listen here, big boy. Where do you come off cutting in here? Go on. Go play cops and robbers someplace else. Beat it, scat, you. Boy, now you're telling him to go yeah. on, slap his teeth out. I'll hold your coat. What? Well, I'll hold your coat, too. <laughs> In fact, I'll take it out and get a press. Cousin, please listen. Quiet. Come here, donkey. You would dare oppose the will of Kasim? Oppose your will? Why, you'll be right in one if you mess around with me, Jack. Oh, now you're talking. Go ahead, take a poke at him. We're not afraid of him, are you? Stand up. <laughs> you're coming with me. Who, me? Both of you. Abdul, put them on horses. The princess also. Now listen, friend. Look, what's up? What do you think you're going to do? Yeah, what about me? I'm innocent, I tell you. Moulay Kasim will take care of you on the desert. You shall die slowly. Your ears shall be sliced off and dried on sticks. The buzzards will feast on your nose. What? That's 16 points right there. <laughs> we pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, and Ginny Sims will bring us Act Three of The Road to Morocco. <laughs> Country Gardens is one of my favorite songs, Sally, and I know what made you think of it. Of course you do. It's these six packets of flower seeds in my hand, Mr. Kennedy. I can hardly wait to plant them. You'll have good results from those seeds, Sally. They're first quality from one of America's leading seed houses. And now I'm going to tell everyone in our audience how to get them. Send in only a dime with a Lux toilet soap wrapper or the opening tab from a box of Lux flakes and your name and address to Lux Flower Garden, Box 1, New York City. 
for a large package each of Cosmos, Candy Tuft, Zinnias, Morning Glories, Marigolds, and Poppies. A selection to give you a garden that will bloom from early summer till frost. And Sally, these seeds have been treated with plant hormones for bigger, earlier flowers. Planting instructions are on the back of each package. I'm going to have a wide border of zinnias and marigolds right around my Victory Vegetable Garden. And a window box, too, with lots of candy tuft and heavenly blue morning glory and marigolds. Me for a bed of those Shirley poppies, Sally. They come in tones of scarlet and pink. And zinnias, too. These are the dahlia flower giant kind. And cosmos, for sure. They bloom right till frost and make fine cutting flowers. I guess most everyone will have a garden this year, Mr. Kennedy. Yes, and we urge all of you to send for yours right away. Now, here's what you do. Send 10 cents and a Lux toilet soap wrapper or an opening tab from a box of Lux flakes to Lux Flower Garden, Box 1, New York City, together with your name and address. You can get a handy order blank from your dealer if you wish. For additional seeds, be sure to enclose another dime and another Lux soap wrapper or another Lux flakes opening tab for each extra set desired. Act quickly, for you must allow two to three weeks for seeds to reach you, and this offer will not be good after May 31st. I'll repeat the address. Lux Flower Garden, Box 1, New York City. Remember, you get six packets of seeds. Be sure to wrap coins securely and write name and address plainly. No stamps, please. This offer is good only in the United States. Now... Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Here's the curtain for the third act of The Road to Morocco, starring Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, and Jenny Sims. Our two heroes, Jeff and Orville Peters, are facing a horrible fate. You will remember that Jeff, instead of Orville, was supposed to marry Shalmar. Because Miramar told Orville that Haida Khan told Shalmar that Muley Kasim, not Jeff, would die in Orville's place if Shalmar married Jeff and not Orville... Oh, what am I saying? Uh, if Jeff marries Shalmar and Muley Kasim marries Orville, Muley Kasim himself and not Shalmar will Jeff. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're a little confused, aren't you? Well, uh, well it's a very confusing story, Mr. Peters. I... Well, you got the whole thing balled up. What, uh, what seems to be the trouble, Turkey? This man here is gumming up the works. This, <laughs> this bystander here. Oh, yeah? Well, uh... Uh, gentlemen, I, I, I'm the producer, you know. Yes, yes, we know. I'll tell you what you do, uh, Bub. Just go over there and sit down. Hmm? What? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, friend. Find a nice corner over there and lux your socks. <laughs> just a minute, just a minute. Go ahead. Blow a few bubbles. Let's not argue with them. Let's, <laughs> let's pick up our soap and get out of here. Yeah, Come on. I pay no, please, time. gentlemen, gentlemen. I, I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. It's all right, Bub. It's all right. Think nothing. Go ahead, Orville. Go right along. Where were we before? Yes. The... What is this? <laughs> People walk in here. And... Oh yeah, we're working in an alley. Malay Kasim. <laughs> Malay Kasim had us bound hand and foot. They carried us out into the desert, and there they left us under the broiling sun. Our hands were chained behind our backs. Our legs were staked to the ground. Around our necks they placed a seventy-pound iron weight. A few hours later, we were walking across the desert toward wait, a distant uh, mirage. Wait, uh, you, whoop, you skipped mm -hmm. something there. Yeah, what? Those chains and stuff, how'd we get out of them? Oh, <laughs> you think we ought to tell them? Mm, no, they wouldn't believe it anyway. <laughs> okay, let's not tell them. <clears throat> After all, does Macy's tell Gimbel's? Nah. <laughs> let's get on with this thing, huh? There we were, stumbling through the desert sands. The sun was beating down on us. Yeah, fine pal you are, letting me give Shalmar up and all the time you knew you weren't going to die. Now, what did you do? You were going to let me marry her because you thought I was going to get knocked off inside a week. Listen, this is no time to argue. Hey, look up there in the sky. You know what they are, don't you? They're buzzards. Yeah, they're carrying finger bowls, too. <laughs> fine way to end up a box lunch for a bird. There's a switch, Junior. A bird getting you. <laughs> hey, Turkey! Take a look over there. Gee, a lot of tents stuck right out in the middle of the desert. What do you make of it? I don't know. Wait a minute. You see those guys? Those are Mullay Kasim's gorillas. Yep, and that joint must be their hideout. Well, we've got to save the girls. It's up to us now, Turkey. We'll have to storm the place. You storm. I'll stay here and drizzle. <laughs> I tell you, we've got to get in there. Hey, I've got something that can't miss. So have they. Guns. What have you got? Listen, now get this. We go in disguised as a horse. Oh, yeah, that's a good... What? A horse. We skin a horse and we get inside. It's a cinch. I got four nags in the Kentucky Derby that way once. <laughs> Look, Bubbles, the only horse you ever had in the Derby, you got in the Brown Derby. <laughs> and they went in as filet mignons. <laughs> come on, come on with me. We'll find his horse skin. Okay. Gee, you wouldn't think it was possible, would you? Two guys inside a horse skin. I'll bet we look like a real horse, eh? Hey? <laughs>
Hey, Turkey, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine way back here. I feel like the tail gunner on a flying fortress. <laughs> a boy. Keep walking now. We walk right past that guard. You see him? I see him, yeah, but does he see us? Sure. He thinks we're a horse, see? He's looking at us right now. He still thinks we're a horse. Yo! Did he get you? Yeah, right where the plow should have been. Who's <laughs> Swine who was hiding in that horse skin. Well, ain't nobody in here excepting just us horses. Kule, mm. Kasim, quick! It is the two swine. So, you return once again, oh, eh? Oh, now wait, Mule. We can explain Take this. Take them away. Take them to the guardhouse and bring me back their ears. Come, come, old man. You're taking this meat shortage too seriously. <laughs> Fine thing. First you sell me for 200 bucks, then I'm going to marry the princess. Then you cut in on me, then we're carried off by a desert sheik. Now we're sitting behind bars waiting to have our heads chopped I off. I know all that. Yeah, but the people who tune in on the middle of the program don't. <laughs> you mean they missed my song? Hey, what's all that? Hey, guard, who are those guys? That's a great sheik, Neb Jola and his men. Friend of Kasim? No, the enemy of Kasim. For ten years there have been a war, but tonight Kasim has invited him to his wedding as a token of peace. Now be silent, both of you. You ought to take something for your throat. You... <laughs> Jeff, Orville. Chalmar. Where are you? Over here by the window, quick. Shalmar, any word from the governor? Listen, listen. I got permission to bring food. In this bowl, you'll find native clothes and blacking for your faces. What good are native clothes? Why didn't you bake us a nice cake with a landmine in it? <laughs> See, I've worked out a plan. It is complete except for one detail. Now, you put the clothes on, put black on your faces, and they'll think you're Arabs. Yeah, but how do we get out of this jail? Oh, Jeff, that's a detail I haven't worked out. Oh, grand, grand, grand. Who's there? The guard is coming. I must fly. That's a great idea she's got. What's going on here? Oh, nothing. Say, did anybody ever escape from this jail? Once, about a year ago, two men got out. Oh, yeah? Tell me, chum, uh, how'd they do it? It was an accident. Till I had a cigarette, I placed my rifle in the window like this. Hello. Oh, interesting. And then what happened? One of the fellows reached through the window, grabbed the rifle, and pointed it at me. Oh, you mean like this? Exactly. Yeah. Except that he put it right up against my head. Oh, you mean like this? Yes, and then... Oh, stick them up. And give us those keys. Hurry back. or we'll spread you, brother. Oh, dear. I've done it again. <laughs> A few minutes later, two natives appeared outside our the wedding party tent. Two figures muffled to the ears. Clark and Tyrone Peters. That's Turkey and me. Look, Jeff, I don't get this. What's frying? Well, I'm cooking up some small sabotage here. Mullah Kasim and Neb Jola are friendly tonight, but they're really enemies, right? Right. Now, here's the plan. We're natives, see? So listen. I think the plan is to hang you in a big Ooh, this is going to be a thing. What are you laughing at? You're breathing down my neck. <laughs> you get the plan? Oh, I get it. Divide and conquer. Brother against brother. Yeah, come on. Stop the music. Nebjola, so great is my joy tonight that I wish to share it with you. May our tribes live together in peace for a thousand years. My hand on that, Kasim. And you are fortunate indeed to win the love of so beautiful a princess. She cannot wait for my kisses upon her lips. Can you, my dove? Kasim, you shall soon know how I feel about you. There? <laughs> you hear? Oh, Mule Kasim, oh, lion of the desert. Yes, Nebish, what is it? <laughs> Two native horsemen have arrived, oh, lion. They beg entrance. Send them in, Nebish. All are welcome tonight. Enter, horsemen. Oh, greetings, oh, sheik. Greetings, oh, lion of the sands. We bring you felicitations on your wedding. Welcome, friends. And from what tribe are you? Who is your master? Our master, uh, my, uh, he's the great sheik, uh, Bull Bull Al Bull 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 Bene Bene. Spell backwards, spells Benny the Bull. <laughs> he says to congratulate you on our wedding to the beautiful Shalmar. Our greetings, O Shalmar. Why, you, you men are... Ixne, Ixne. up we ayat kwe. It's F.J. and Erkite. Oye, ayat kwe. What tongue is this? Uh, these men speak a strange language, O sheik. I learned it from one of their tribesmen. From what country? Oakland Bray. Oh, friends, you may tell your master that I accept his greetings. Tell him also that Mullah Kasim and Neb Jola are now brothers. No! Yes. Well, great news, O Lion of the Desert. Yes, great news. And will you forget, O Lion, that Neb Jola said you ought to have your mane clipped? Oh, oh, what? That's, that? that is a lie. I never said it. Well, it doesn't matter. That's all a thing of the past. Certainly drop it. Like drop the it. time Mullah Kasim called Jala a jerk. Jerk Jala, he said oh, you oh, might... Oh, 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 no, never!
Never, Your Highness. If I thought that was true, my tribesmen here would tear your men into little bits. Oh, now, don't fight, boys. There's nothing to get excited about. Certainly not. Your brothers. They're right, Neb Jolla. There must be no shedding of blood. Please, my friend. Uh, very well. I will forget it. Sure, sure. Everything is forgotten tonight. Say, Neb Jolla, oh, boy, will you ever forget the time you sneaked in a Moulay's harem? What? <laughs> my harem? Neb Jolla. Will you believe this, swine? You snake, you viper. It's a lie. Here, here, here. Now, quiet, everybody. Sit down, Moulay. Sit down, Neb. What's the matter with you guys? Sure, it's all in fun. Very relax. well, but no more insults. Your Highness, my word. Yes, now we are friends again. It is good. What does it matter if once you were enemies? Tonight, Moulay, Kasim, and Neb... Oh! <laughs> Why, Ned Chola, you pinched me. What? You swine! <laughs> she lies! I never pinch! Well, somebody did. This is the finish! Now, boys, boys, don't shoot each other. Don't shoot. No, use your knives. <laughs> here we go! Honey, spread your wings. Well, that's that's the story. We escaped during the brawl, and we reached the coast by camelback. Then a boat to Lisbon, and then home to Brooklyn, and here we are. Gentlemen, that's one of the greatest adventure stories I've ever heard. And the girls? I suppose you married them. The girls? Oh, uh, well, uh, Turkey, the girls. What's the matter? The girls, Shalmar and Miramar. Well, what about them? Where are they? Well, you ought to know. I gave them to you. You did not. I was taking care of the tickets. Don't say that. Right there in the dock in Morocco. I said, here's the girls. I'll take the baggage. Well, how did I know what bags you meant? <laughs> Turkey, I'll bet they're standing there on that dock now. Yeah, well, what are we waiting for? Come on. Well, come on. Gentlemen, come back. Hangway, son. Hey, which way is the road to Morocco? <laughs> Right now, Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, and Ginny Sims are on the road to a curtain call. Every night when the good little producers of Hollywood go to sleep, they lie there and dream of casts like this. Yeah, then they wake up in the morning, go downstairs, and bite their children. <laughs> There's no way to talk about Ginny Sims. Ah, yes, Ginny Sims. Ginny, who do you think is more romantic, Bing or me? Well, let's see. There's Bing's voice. <laughs> and my profile. <laughs> then there's your clothes, Bob. Have you seen Crosby's? I mean, when he has the coat plugged in? <laughs> You may not think I'm handsome, but C.B. does why. Do you know he tested me for Reap the Wild Wind? Smart producer. You flunked, huh? Well, <laughs> I was sorry to turn Bob down, but he just wasn't believable. Yeah, Squid's got to have more than two arms. <laughs> <laughs> you usually do till a check arrives. <laughs> uh, Bing. <laughs> Bing, these golf matches you and Bob play for the Red Cross and other charities, who wins most of them? It's a lie! <clears throat> How did you know what I was going to say? Well, I figured you were going to tell the truth. How about hitting a few or more? You want to play? Okay. Gee, Bob, Bing really likes golf, doesn't he? Why not? After all, he raises his own caddies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Bing. I really walked into that one. <clears throat> He's stork mad, that boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. B Mr. DeMille, it's been swell being here. And before we say goodnight, I'd like to tell you that I've been using your Lux soap for a long time now, and... I like everything about it. So does my skin. <laughs> What'd you think about Lux Soap as a page one item with us, Ginny? Say, uh, what do you figure you'll try out here next week, C.B.? An exciting adventure story, Bing. The RKO hit, Once Upon a Honeymoon. And our stars will be Claudette Colbert and Brian Ahern. Let's see. Yes, I'll be listening, C.B. None of my pictures are playing anywhere next Monday. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Don't forget to load the Relax Radio Theater. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Claudette Colbert and Brianna Hearn in Once Upon a Honeymoon. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Bing Crosby was heard tonight with the courtesy of the Kraft Cheese Company. His next Paramount picture is Dixie. Bob Hope appeared through the courtesy of the Pepsi and Company and will soon be seen in Paramount's Let's Face It. Ginny Sims appeared through the courtesy of Philip Morris. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Claudette Colbert and Brian Ahern in Once Upon a Honeymoon. Mothers, are you worried about food rationing and shortages? 
Yes, I know it's harder now to get vitamin-rich foods. But have you ever thought about giving your family VIMS? VIMS give you... All the vitamins government experts say are essential. And... The balanced formula doctors endorse. In addition, VIMS give you all the minerals commonly lacking. Get VIMS at your druggist. VI for vitamins, double MS for minerals. Get that VIMS feeling. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.